What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how we can make 360 environments and use them in our favorite programs like Unreal Engine and Cinema 4D by this new company called Blockade Labs. Now, I came across this recently on Twitter, so I went to check it out and I'll leave a link down below, but this is the website right here. As you can see, it's actually interactive. So when you just click and drag, you can see that these are full 360 environments and you could create these absolutely free. So I'm just going to come down here to where it says conjure your world. I'm going to left click on this and it's going to come up with this default setting right here. It looks like it's getting pretty popular because it's saying that things might be a little bit slow right now. I know yesterday things were going pretty fast, but let's come down here and let's type in the text prompt. So let's say space inspired Mars type setting, something like that. So let's see what comes up like. We have about 350 characters to work with here. Down here in the lower right hand corner, we actually have a couple of different prompts that we could do. So you could do fantasy landscape. That's what's on by default. You could do anime style, surreal, digital paint. Let's see what happens when I do scenic and then maybe I'll do realistic next. But let me do scenic first. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click generate and let it work its magic. Now we can see what kind of environment that it created here. It has, oh, it has some spaceships or something in there. I don't really want that in there. So maybe down in my description, I put like no spaceships, no rockets, plane environment. Let's see, I'm gonna come down here and actually, yeah, let's do realistic. Let's see what comes up with this. And I'm gonna click generate again and let's see what happens here. Now, when you get to the website, you'll see a warning up top. If there's gonna be a lot of people using it, it will say like, maybe it's gonna be a little bit slow. So for each one of these, it usually just take about like 60 to 120 seconds. So just be patient. It does have the bar down there, the status bar that will let you know when everything's finished. Now, this is kind of cool. It's giving us like this nebula scene down here. You can see we have some nebulas here. We have some planets. We do have some spaceships again in here. But as you can see down here in the lower left hand corner, it says it's alpha 0.3. So it's probably still learning from everybody's text prompts in here. I'm gonna go with something that I created earlier and I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually bring this into Unreal Engine. But first, if you wanna download, like say that you're happy with what you have and you wanna download this, make sure you come down here in the lower right hand corner where it says download. So you just click this and then it's gonna download a JPEG for you. Now for anybody interested in bringing this into Unreal Engine, you can't use JPEGs. You're gonna to have to use an HDR in which, let me show you how we're gonna do that. Now I'm gonna be using Adobe Photoshop for this, but you can use After Effects as well, just as long as you can save out an HDR. So inside of Photoshop, I have this scene that I was playing around with earlier. I could probably get the space station out of here. So let me actually come up here. I'm gonna try this real quick. I'm gonna come down here to the marquee tool. I'm just gonna highlight this. And then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do content aware fill. Okay. Hit control D and there we go. So it did a pretty decent job. You could probably clean this up a little bit more if you want, but that's a way that we can actually clean up some of this stuff inside of Photoshop. Now, in order to save this out as an HDR, we need to make sure that this file is 32 bit. In order to do that, I'm gonna come up here to image, come down here to mode, and right here, it's gonna come in as 8 bit because this is a JPEG, but we can make it 32 bits right here. So once I click on this, it's gonna ask me if I wanna flatten it, which I'm just gonna flatten it, should be fine. And there we go. So now when I come over here to file, save as, and once I'm in my save as window down here, if I come down here to save type as, I'm gonna left click on this, and you should see .hdr right here. Now this is gonna be a radiance file, so I'm gonna left click on this, something like that. And I'm gonna click on save. And now we have an HDR file that we could use inside of Unreal Engine. Now with Unreal Engine opened up, I'm gonna add an HDR backdrop in here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come up here where it says quickly add the project. I'm gonna left click on this. And then I'm gonna come down here, the lights. And I'm gonna come down here, the HDR backdrop. And I'm gonna left click and turn this on. And now you can see that it has an HDR already in there by default. If I just navigate through here a little bit, you can see it's just a simple scene and we're gonna replace this. So what I'm gonna do now is drag my HDR. So I'm just gonna click and drag it down here. I have my file explorer on my second window here. And now you see it says import done. So I can actually just hit save all, just save everything in here. And then with my HDR backdrop selected, I'm actually gonna pull this up. And right here under cube map, all you have to do is left click, drag it into here. And now we have it inside of Unreal Engine. Now, if it's a little bit funky down here, like you can see, it might be a little bit distorted right here. 
if you click on this little purple diamond and you pull it up you can actually fix some of that so let me pull this up just like so until you find something that you're happy with and that's basically how we can bring this imagery into unreal engine and then from here you can actually add like mega scans or some of your own environmental pieces and just use this as the backdrop and then like have some foreground stuff in here i actually did something like this a couple years ago i'll leave a link up top there but i was speaking at the college university of ucla and i was showing them how we can actually use the mars environments inside of unreal engine the stuff that they captured up there with the mars rover brought into unreal engine and then use mega scans to lay everything out so same thing here you can definitely build environments around the stuff that you're building so hopefully this helped you guys out. I know AI is a controversial thing still right now, but as more of these tools are coming out and I'm seeing how we can add them to a workflow, not just take what we prompt out and just throw it out there. I'm starting to see this stuff as more of a valuable tool that we can add to our skill set and make some of the process a little bit easier. So I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below, how you feel about AI now that this stuff is rapidly speeding and approaching us at a light speed. And as always, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I see you again. Take care.